Bum, ba, da, dum. Howdy y'all, Banjo Ben here. Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. Today we're continuing our course with open chords on the mandolin. So, so far we've learned the G, the C, and the D, and we've learned how to apply those and play songs with them and did some drills to where it trains our brain to be able to go to those chords without thinking. That's the goal, is to be able to just put our fingers there and make good sounds and not have muffled notes, all those things. So if you haven't watched that first lesson, learning G, C, and D, you want to go check that out. In this lesson, we're going to learn two more open chords that are quite uh, useful. We're going to use them all the time. We're going to learn the A and the E chord. But beyond that, now we have a lot more options, right? Because once we've learned the A and the E chords, we can begin to play in different keys rather than just G. So we're gonna work on the key of D and uh, the key of A. So I'll have some drills for you, of course, and then we'll work that into songs as well. And then we'll just review everything to where we make sure that we have all five of these major chords down in the open positions. If you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, I'd love to have you as a Gold Pick member over on the website. If you join over there, you get access to hundreds of lessons for banjo, guitar, and mandolin. I have learning tracks that take you step-by-step step through your progression so you can keep track with your progress and push ahead. So without further ado, let's learn some of these chords. Let's begin this lesson with a bit of review over the chords that we've learned so far. Do you remember them? Maybe you just took the lesson. Maybe it's been a little while, so let's review. The first chord that we learned was the G chord. And this is, of course, one position of the G chord, but we call it the open position because we're using some of the open strings to help make our chords. So it turns out that these lowest strings on the mandolin, the G and the D, are also two notes in our G major chord. So all that we've got to do is cover the frets on the top two strings to also be notes in the G major chord. And if we do that just like this, it makes a G major chord. So we've got our third fret on the top string, and our second fret on the second string there. And we practiced in our drills, just going from open, our hands off, to playing our G major chord. The next one that we learned is pretty easy after we've learned our G chord, because all we're going to do is move our fingers up to the next, to the middle strings, and that's gonna be our C chord. And this one's a little tougher to get clean because our fingers have to curve just right to play those middle two strings and not pollute the outside strings. So we're gonna get curved fingers. We're not going to palm our mandolin. We're actually going to have our fingers pointed toward our right shoulder if you're right-handed. So we're not playing up toward the ceiling. That's a mistake that some people make. Just reviewing some of these things we covered last time. So we're just gonna naturally curve our finger over and it's gonna take some practice getting those clean. And we practiced going from open and from going from G to C. Now the last chord we learned is more difficult than the previous two, just because our fingers have to stretch a little bit and that's the open D chord. And we're gonna have our second fret here on our first string. And then with our index finger, we're going up for the second fret on the lowest string. And that one's very, very important that we've got our fingers pointed toward our right shoulder and not trying to point toward the ceiling. We'll have a very difficult time if we're trying to do this and our wrist is bent in an unnatural angle and we're bracing our thumb on the back of the mandolin like a classical guitar player. We wanna just naturally let that mandolin fall right at the top of our index finger, rest on that knuckle, curve our fingers over right into that position. And it's gonna feel weird at first, that's okay. You'll get used to it. And then we practice going back and forth. So let's just review that now. Let's do four strums on the G chord, then we'll move to our C chord, and then four strums on our D chord. Ready, go. Back to the G chord. And then we learned how to play Amazing Grace using those chords. Now let me get, introduce one more uh, pick hand uh, element to you before we move on. So far we've only been working with strumming, just like we did there, strumming on the downbeats. We can also begin to introduce some arpeggios, cross-picking type style. What I mean by that is playing each of the four strings independently. Now you could play them all with downstrokes, 
and that would be fine. But what I want you to work on, begin to work on, if you haven't already, is playing alternate pick strokes. So a down stroke on your lowest string, then an up stroke, then a down stroke, then an up stroke. So it looks like this. And if we try to change our chords while doing that, um, it becomes a little bit more complex, but it's something that we need to start working on now. So we're going to do two times through the strings on each chord, G, C, D, back to G. Ready, go. And switch. Now there's several different reasons why I want you to work on that because uh, one is because it starts working more on our pick hand, getting precise with playing those individual strings, but also it's going to show us our errors, right? So whenever I played my C chord, I heard that my E note there wasn't as clear as I needed to be. So it just shows us where we might need to work because whenever we're just strumming, it's easy not to hear what muffled notes we might have. Okay, so now that you've reviewed and you remember your G, C, and D chord, and we've introduced that right hand additional pattern, it's time to move on and let's learn our A chord. The A chord is a chord that we're going to use a lot on the mandolin because of how the mandolin is tuned. It just lends itself to the key of A and to other keys that have an A chord in them. And the reason is because two of our strings, the A string and the E string, are two notes in the A chord. So it's just kind of built around that A chord. So a lot of fiddle tunes, you know, mandolin's tuned the same as a fiddle. A lot of our fiddle tunes are in the key of A or in the key of D, which has an A chord, or the key of E, which has an A chord. So it's one we're going to use a lot, both playing um, lead and, of course, playing the rhythm and back up to that. So there's lots of different A chords we can get all over the mandolin. But the one we're gonna first introduce today is the open A chord. And there's even different ways that we can play that. But let me cover the main one first. There's a couple of different ways you can even finger this, but we're going to play the second frets of the lowest strings together, okay? The second frets of the lowest strings together. So the first way that I want you to try playing it is by putting your index finger on the second fret of the lowest string. And then it's kind of a tight squeeze. We really have to curve those fingers get your middle finger in on the second fret of the D string. Now the challenge is gonna be, of course, not to come over and mute that A string with your middle finger. Now, if you do that a little bit, that's fine. That's one of the advantages of Manlin having a uh, pair of strings per note, is if we were going to accidentally mute one of those A strings and play, we're still gonna hear the A note, but we do wanna to try to get it clean. Now, if those of you with really big fingers, this is going to be difficult, but you can get better at it and you can cheat toward the ceiling with this. You know, you can get on the edge of your lowest string and then fit your middle finger in there. But why don't you work on playing that with me just like this and I'll show you a different way to play it that honestly I, I use more often. Can you get that clean? Can you try your right hand uh, cross picking pattern? Are they clean? Let's try going from open like we've done before, to the position. Good. Now, I told you there's a different way to play it. Let's cover that. The way that I'll typically play this is by barring. Barring, not borrowing, <laughs> but barring, B-A-R-R-I-N-G. And I'm going to use my index finger to play both sets of strings. Now, this takes a little bit of practice. It might seem impossible at first, but I've even seen uh, people with much smaller hands than me being able to play this chord. But what it's going to require is for us to flatten our finger out a little bit. Okay, and there is a position that you've got to get in to be able to flatten it out to get it clean, but also not mute that second string. That's going to take some practice. Fiddle players do it all the time. So they're naturally a little bit better at it, right off the bat. When you're playing um, mandolin rhythm and you're playing an A chord, a, a lot of times you're gonna be doing a big chop. Maybe you've learned this um, before or not. But a lot of times you're gonna be up here chopping. 
but I've got a lesson on the site called Modern Mandolin Rhythm. And that's what we're seeing more and more players do, where they use these open chords, like this one, to play instead of the big chop. And you might say, well, that wouldn't sound good. If we want to chop, we don't just want to, we don't want to treat the mandolin like a guitar and have it ringing out. Well, there's ways to chop it, and they'll actually mute. Folks will mute with their little fingers, so it'll sound like this. And a lot of times, whenever they're playing their chord, they're only playing these bottom two strings. But that's to come. But I just want to let you know that this chord is not only used with pretty open strummy stuff, but also used whenever we're playing rhythm at times, okay? Depending on what the song is calling for. Now, I don't have this uh, next little chord shape on the chart, but I would just want you to make, make you aware of it, uh, that you can also get an A open chord by playing that D string with your index finger on the second fret and reaching way out and grabbing the sixth fret on the lowest string, on the G string. That's a C sharp note. Okay? In fact, if you got an iPhone, you might have heard this. Okay? So that's another shape. And the reason why I'm going to um, prioritize this shape is because whenever we play this shape and we think about the notes that are in it, this sixth fret is the C sharp note. Now, what's the C sharp? The C sharp is the third note in an, in an A major scale. And that's the note that determines whether the chord is major or minor. It's a very, very strong, powerful note. It screams out when you throw that C sharp in that we're playing an A major chord. Whereas whenever we play this chord, we're not actually playing all three notes in a a major triad, we're actually just playing two over and over again. We've got an A note, an E note, an A note, and an E note. It's also known as a power chord, and it works in both a major and a minor context, but we'll cover that in an upcoming lesson. But this A major chord here might sound good. You can easily make it a minor by sliding your ring finger down one fret, flatting that third tone, and that's A minor. But sometimes this big A major chord might not sound that good with bluegrass because there might be a lot of minor sounding stuff happening, even if it's not officially a minor song. That'll make more sense as you go along. So I want you to prioritize this one, but know that you can also get an open A major chord here, and sometimes you're going to use it. Okay, so let's move on, and I want to learn the E chord next, and then we'll work in some exercises. Maybe you might drop an octave on this one. One, red, um, me. 